Good morning, folks. It's good to be together for uh, worship, uh, for gathering uh, together with one voice to praise and worship our God. Uh, we continue in the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, the setting is about a week before Jesus' death. He's just entered uh, Jerusalem to shouts of Hosanna, Hosanna. He overturns uh, tables in the of the uh, money exchangers in the temple uh, area, and he's, uh, he's talking to a group of folks in the temple. And uh, we've been pushed these uh, past works, uh, weeks, I mean, we've been pushed toward uh, forgiveness, to um, become gifters of God's grace in the world, uh, to live out uh, love, and I think that uh, that continues as uh, Jesus notices uh, hypocrisy in people. Our willingness to say we're gonna do something and not do it, and uh, likewise, our willingness to say we're not gonna do something and then do it. And uh, we might gather around a question uh, this morning. I wonder what happened for the two brothers in the parable who uh, n neither did what they said they were gonna do. So. Join with us, uh, sing along, participate, and uh, let us remember that God is good. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Let us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hello there, friends. It is time now for our youth message. So I invite our young people to gather around, and let's spend a few minutes talking about our gospel story for today. So you've probably heard the phrase that actions speak louder than words. Uh, and maybe you've experienced it, where someone has said um, maybe that they want to be friends with you. 
and then uh, later their actions don't really match up. Maybe they, they treat you in a mean way instead of a friendly way. And so based on their actions, um, you maybe think that they don't really want to be your friend. And there's a lot of situations where that is true, where actions, what you do, speaks louder or means more than what you say. And I can think of a couple of examples, like when I was a kid, um, you know, I saw all these leaves changing color uh, over the last few days, and it got me to thinking about when my parents would ask me to rake the leaves out in the yard. And I might say, yeah, I'll go do that, and then maybe I forget. Or uh, I got caught up in something else, or I got too busy, or whatever reason, and I ended up not getting out there to do the job that they'd asked me to do. And my parents were let down by that. Uh, my actions said that I didn't really care about getting that job done, even though I said the right words. And uh, so that's a little bit of what's happening in the parable that Jesus is telling to the folks gathered in the temple in our reading today. He said that there was a, a, a farmer with two sons. And the first son, uh, the father asked the son to go out and do the work in the vineyard. And the son said, no, I don't want to do that. But then ultimately he went out and he did it. And the second son, the father asked him to go out and do the work. And the second son said yes, but then never showed up. And so I think part of what um, we can take from this message today is that our actions speak louder than our words. That um, we need to live out uh, the life that God is calling us to do. You know, God wants us to love our neighbors and even love our enemies. He wants us to stand up for people who are being put down, uh, people who are being bullied. And uh, we can't just say the words that bullying is bad. Our actions have to match up with it. And we can't just, um, we can't just say that we love people. We need to act out of love too. So we need to um, not just say the words, but we need to give hugs. We need to um, do acts of kindness that show how much we love each other. So uh, that's a challenge for you, okay? This, in the coming weeks, um, find ways to show your love. Listen for what God is calling you to do and act on it. Don't just say, yes, God, I hear you. I'll do it. Actually go out there and do it. Okay? It may not be easy, it might be really challenging, but that's what God calls us to do, to go out and act. Okay, So I will be praying for you as you do that, and uh, as we wrap up, will you pray with me? Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his example. Thank you for his actions. Help us to hear you, to hear the job you have for us to do, and help us to put it into action. Give us courage, give us strength, and let your love be shared in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I thank you, friends. I hope you have a very blessed week. Our reading is from Philippians chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, 
every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning's gospel comes from the 21st chapter of Matthew, beginning with the 23rd verse. And the header to this pericope is the authority of Jesus questioned. Think uh, think in terms of authority. Who uh, Jesus is, who has uh, power, and uh, who has the the truth. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven? Or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. The son answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, You did not change your minds and believe him. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Join me for a word of prayer. Good and uh, gracious Father, we turn to you on this day with uh, thanksgiving. You have uh, created us. You have provided for us. And uh, you so desire to to love us by being present with us. So uh, be in our midst on uh, this day. Let this word be your word, holy and pleasing to you. Let our ears be open, and in receiving your word, let our hearts be changed. Amen and amen. This uh, last uh, line of Our gospel reading today is uh, powerful, is it not? John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This idea of changing their minds is uh, proposed in the parable. The first son saying to his father, I'll do it, but uh, I will not do it, but, but then doing it. And the second son, perhaps seeking to be uh, pleasing, I'll do it, 
and then doesn't. Isn't that the story of our lives? How easy it is to change our minds. How hard it is to take in new information. To say, I was wrong. Or to say, that's a better idea. Um, this uh, passage, and Matthew, frankly, all of Matthew, seems to press on us, seems to press on uh, leaders uh, to be better, seems to press on the very things that Jesus values. This idea of changing, in fact, is, uh, is really important to John. John and baptism are uh, lifted up by Jesus. Repentance, you see, is changing. Repentance is turning. It is reconciling. It is re-engaging with the things that God uh, lifts up as important. It's easy, if you've spent any time in the church, it's easy to pick up on the language, the ideas. It's easy to get familiar with a scripture. We learn the language of God and of the church, the language of love, of forgiveness and mercy, the language of compassion and spirit, the language uh, kind of like Paul uh, does in our passage from Philippians when he says, make my joy complete, be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Clearly, this is uh, in line with Christ's teaching, to love God and love the other as your primary focus is to put aside love of self, to set aside self-interest in favor of the interest of the other is uh, clearly an act of love. It's hard to do, however, isn't it? My uh, self, my ego, wants to get in the way. My ego wants to be known, wants credit, wants approval, wants to be right. I must fight it every day if I'm going to align with Jesus Christ. Paul gets it because Paul is doing the hard work of discipleship, becoming, changing. The Christian life then is less about learning the language and saying the right thing and more about doing the right thing, that our lives become witnesses. The best case scenario is both our words and our actions line up. The worst case scenario is we say the right words and then our actions come up short. In fact, for much of the world, uh, the, the one thing they're certain of in the Christian community is hypocrisy. That the Christian church is full of hypocrites, people who talk about love and forgiveness and withhold both. My friends, Christ lived love and forgiveness. He didn't enter relationships in judgmental faction, uh, fashion. He entered them with a desire to be present, to be in relationship. We hear in John 3.16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son. God loves us. He loves his world. He 
wants nothing more than to be in relationship with us. And as we know from uh, the story of Adam and Eve, original sin planted in a beautiful garden, all our needs uh, met. We desired more. The one set of instructions we were given, don't eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, we did. This is ego and self. My friends, for Americans today, we honor and value independence. It's an important uh, value for all of us, and it's often the very thing that gets in the way of witnessing Christ in the world, that our words and our actions reflect God rather than self, that we trust God for righteousness, that it is on the cross, Christ's death and resurrection, that we are saved, that we are made righteous, not because of our own good, not because of our selfish ambition, our rightness, but because of God's goodness. This is an important word, and uh, we might uh, use our strong sense of independence rather than just for our own becoming and our own benefit. We might use our independence to draw more deeply into God's kingdom. The end of the Philippians reading we heard, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Isn't this a great uh, vision for life? To will and to work for God's pleasure. Isn't that what's happening in this uh, story about these sons? Let's listen to that again and put it in the context of will and work. A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said to the uh, said the same, and he answered, I go, sir, but he did not go. And Jesus asks, which of the two did the will of his father? And they said the first. Jesus trapped uh, them, these chief uh, priests. We, we've known about the battle with the Pharisees that Jesus has been engaged in. But much like the Christian church, the Jewish uh, temple uh, was not just one uh, flavor of Judaism any more than Christianity is all the same. No, there's a bunch of different versions of it. So too here. These chief priests had been in control and in leadership, the group of them, for almost 100 years after uh, the Romans took over Jerusalem. It was because they had authority. They already had uh, power and wealth, and they could placate the masses on behalf of the occupying enemy. I'm pretty sure it was a hard job to remain faithful to their calling to God's church and to remain faithful to the, G, uh, to the Roman leaders who had entrusted them with responsibility. This is authority. I asked you at the beginning to think of authority. What gives Jesus authority? Well, we know as early as Jesus' birth that it was uh, planned and called out by God. Mary and Joseph 
invited into God's uh, story to bring God's Son, Jesus Christ, into our midst. The angels came and announced that and then brought uh, witnesses. So too, at Jesus' baptism, calling John to baptize and uh, after uh, dunking him in the river as Jesus comes up out of the water, we hear about the Spirit like a dove coming upon him and God's voice proclaiming, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. That is my hope uh, today, friends, is that God is also pleased uh, with us. But we're going to have to work. You see, Jesus and disciples, they model a discipling life. They model growth in knowing the word and praying in worshiping together, in serving and fighting for justice. Isn't it interesting that the people Jesus lifts up aren't the leaders of the church, but prostitutes and tax collectors, those who aren't acceptable. We see that in, in, in scripture. Demons, the adversary, and the outsiders, they all know who Jesus is, the Son of God. They're able to witness and make proclamation of that. The folks leading the church struggle with it. They have much to lose. Their own wants and desires aren't going to get fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. So they try to trap him. And he always turns the table. My friends, uh, let this be a week where we can draw into this word when we can be curious about who has authority in our lives. Is it us? Our independence, our rightness, our goodness? Is it our elected leaders? Do they have the ultimate authority? Are they going to fix everything that ails us? Is it our families? Is it the church? Or is it God? God, as known in the person of Jesus Christ, is indeed the ultimate authority. Everything we need to know, we can see and learn in Christ's life. This one who continues to invite us into relationship, wants to be with us, to be reconciled with us, to have us value the same things God values. and to live those values, thereby becoming like disciples, physically present in the earthly kingdom, but living into the godly kingdom even today, practicing forgiveness, compassion, praise, and trust. This, this uh, time is a tremendous time of fear for many. And we know from scripture that the antidote to fear is trust and love in God. Join with me in making a commitment in the coming weeks to step away from fear. Fear of the weather, politics, racial strife, economic disaster. The list is literally endless fear of coronavirus, fear of job loss, broken relationships, the list goes on and on. The antidote is not safety and security and removing ourselves from places of danger. The antidote, my friends, is trust in God 
best seen in the love of Christ Jesus, thereby working back to love God, love people being the most important command. That is still our a job, and that will pull us out of the pit of despair that fear often brings about. My friends, uh, this is a good day. It's the day the Lord hath made. God is good, and you are loved. Amen and amen. Let us join together in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another. Join me for a few minutes of prayers. I'll make a space for uh, you to add prayers. You can chat them right into the, uh, into the feed here for our uh, worship. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. In all the world, God, Give your church unity. Inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ, where the church is powerful and where it struggles. Shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Son, 
took on all of bodily life in our world, even to death. Preserve and keep your creation, O God. Mend and redeem places that are polluted and damaged so that all of creation confesses you as Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn the nations toward life. Where our ways are unfair, give us new hearts and new spirits. Where sin permeates our cultures and institutions, change our minds and teach us to trust your authority. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our lives are yours, O God. Relieve the suffering of those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit. Defend the lives and welfare of children who are abused or neglected, hungry or exploited or lonely. God, on uh, this day, we lift up some of our important ones. Bridget, Krissa, Scott, Marjorie, Margaret, Ellie, Melissa, Sharon, Lori, Bob, Susie, John, Cindy, Carol, Norma, Sandy, and Carl. Uh, we pray for um, the Von Fischer clan, the Ovens uh, clan, and uh, we pray for the, tar the uh, Carlson clan as they continue grieving uh, the uh, deaths of uh, ones close to them. Remind us, God, and let us trust indeed that uh, your resurrection is our resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lastly, we pray for uh, this coronavirus time. We pray for its end, the end of its hold on us. We pray protection and comfort for all who have been affected adversely, both in a physical economic, and uh, emotional ways. God, continue to work in us to connect us in creative ways, to draw us uh, together to protect one another with masks and distance. And uh, we still pray for an end to coronavirus. We also uh, pray for all of those folks working on vaccinations. God, you're good. Help us to change in ways that are pleasing to you and holy to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, it has been good to be together. I love when, when God's people can gather together and remember who God is. And uh, worship and prayer are so center in our lives together. So uh, thank you. Thank you for continuing to make space for God and make space for witnessing. I think it's one of the bigger witnesses we can make in the world is by committing uh, to, to worshiping God regularly together. Thank you also for your support of our ministries as seen in your financial giving and in your volunteerism. Uh, please keep it up. It is the only way our life 
uh, together is, is possible. Uh, lastly, in this uh, season, as we draw into uh, Sunday School and Confirmation, I remind you there are other uh, Christian education opportunities. We have a number of uh, Bible studies for men and for women, uh, as well as uh, during the week for adults on uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Who, who knows, maybe on one of your hearts, there's another a Bible study or a book study that's uh, been bubbling. I'd love to talk about it um, because that will help us in our obedience to a life of discipleship, a life of growth in uh, Christ. Uh, so uh, thank you again for your uh, commitment to God's church. I have a couple of announcements for our young people. Uh, we have, as Pastor John mentioned, we have started back into Sunday school, uh, last week being the first week back. Uh, we're continuing again this week. We are having a great time with it. If you haven't signed up yet and you would like to be a part of Sunday school, it is not too late. You can just go to our website for all the details. Also, uh, confirmation got started this past week, uh, and we are excited about that uh, resuming as well. Again, uh, if you have a young person in your life who would, be, um, who sh would like to be a part of that program, uh, you can find all the information on our church website. Uh, youth group, on October 4th, uh, I invite all of our 6th through 12th graders here to the church for a bonfire. Uh, we'll have some games, uh, roast some marshmallows, that kind of stuff. Uh, there's information about that also on the church website. We are asking for participants to register by Friday the 2nd, just so that we can plan uh, for the numbers that are signed up. And finally, uh, we are making plans for a mission trip. We are going to uh, try to go out to Montana, to the Northern Cheyenne Reservation. Uh, this is a trip that we had started planning last year through YouthWorks, and unfortunately, we're not able to uh, go on that trip because of uh, coronavirus restrictions. So we're gonna make another shot at it uh, for this upcoming summer, 2021. That trip is open to anyone in grades eight through 12, uh, and I, the deadline for signing up for that is October 14th. Um, again, there should be information available uh, on our church website for that trip. With that, I invite you to receive this morning's blessing. May the Lord who made heaven and earth, the Christ who lived and died for all, and the Spirit who renews our minds and hearts, abide with you and all God's people, now and forever. Amen. Amen.